Hey guys, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All. I am here with Katie. Hello. Uh, we are on part 13 and we are sugar and spice and nothing at all nice. Fuck you, hey, I remember, remember to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I remembered. <laughs> Fuck you too. <laughs> um, we've got an interesting setup. Uh, Katie is here today. Um, and yes, since, I am. Since my roommate is gone, um, Katie is free to use other rooms to record without disrupting anybody. So, uh, the only thing that will be a disruption is my cat. <laughs> I have the courtroom cat. She, yeah, she has the courtroom cat who will chew on the many wires that are around her because my cat is a wire chewer. Of course she is. Hopefully the cat TV keeps her occupied. Seems to be right now. Good. All right. So, that is not what I wanted. That is what I wanted. All right. Um, we are in the home stretch. Yes, we just couldn't finish up last time. Yep. Today's a long day, baby. I can't believe it. Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is. And to think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, am I that hated? Uh, is this Mo? I think it's Mo. I think it is. Ah -ah! Oh, oh no. it was Maya, but whatever. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. Agro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... He did? Oh no! No, it is Mo. Yeah. Psst! Psst! <coughs> but, but. I, I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? But you're not, which is kind of the reason why. <coughs> oh, is this gumshoe? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Oh my I god! Forgot. Where where are we? What 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 year is it? <laughs> uh, we're in Turnabout Big Top, and so everything's insane. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, pal. Yeah, you gonna ignore me after I went through all this trouble to bring you some evidence? I feel. Hey, pal, you ever get the sense of deja vu? All the time. Okay. Uh, uh Detective Gumshoe. Ah, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, detective. I I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? We've got some really tasty milk. How about a card trick, detective? Mm. <laughs> well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned. What is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yep, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Uh, won't Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? Ugh. That's why this is all a secret. Huh? Uh, look, details are on a need-to-know basis, and we're not really allies or anything. For now. Uh, but everything that's happened in code up till now has gone according to our plan. Oh. I don't know. Miss Von Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. Uh, you'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. Uh, that reminds me. I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part? I'm not sure. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ah! Don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For, for me? It's milk. 
The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me? Nick, that didn't sound like something Miss Von Karma would say. She would be like, I will defeat you, Phoenix, right? She wouldn't be like, the truth is decided, isn't decided until the very end. No, no, she wouldn't. Nick? Let's just get back into the court. Oh, yeah, okay. Court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I would like to continue with Acro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Acro would have had to commit this, m this crime. Understood. And now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor. And please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Okay, prep your iPod, got it. The murder bird is back. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Here we go again. You think I forgot that shit? God damn it. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the Barry Big Circus, Russell Barry, took us in. I became an acrobat around nine years old. Out of curiosity. He's like 25, I think? 26, yeah. Like Good memory. So he's been an acrobat for 25 years. Yeah. 24 and a half. Six months ago. Not 20. Like 16. Or 15 years. Oh, yes. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I, I Look, I, I freely... 17 years, aha. I freely do not math good. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm... You're such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could, uh, could think that Acro would kill the man who he held in, uh, in such esteem. You're absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for a cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the Ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. So, this case is a dick. You can choose... to cross-examine him, but there's no need to. You, if you cross-examine him, you have to press every fucking statement. Yeah. Or you can take the shortcut and say no need to question him now. So, Nick? Uh, no need to question him now. There's no need to cross-examine this witness. Wh what's that? Why was the ringmaster murdered? There's no need to delve into that bit of testimony when I already know the I know the answer already. Hmm. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I would just like to know. Can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want the ringmaster dead? I can't provide one. Nick? Yeah. I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor. 
The reason that Agro killed the ringmaster is something that can't be proven. Wh what? That's because Acro had no reason to kill the ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us into, like, foolish fools is so foolhardily foolish. I can hear that owl through my headphones from downstairs. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's amazing. There is a bit of an echo. So for those who don't know, uh, where I live right now has quite a bit of acoustics, um, regardless of where uh, Katie set up. So, um, I mean, there's just going to be a bit of acoustics on her end. I'm sorry. That's just how it be. You are fine. Everyone's just going to have to fucking deal with it because this is just a temporary thing. So, because you were like, fuck it, we're going to hang out and I'm going to bring my shit over so we can stream. Yeah. Because you're baller. So, um, yeah, I was just laughing because I could hear the owl. Like, I, could, I heard it in my, like, I heard it a split second. Like, very faintly before I heard it in my ears. <laughs> that just made me laugh really hard. Did you forget you made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was. This is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro. You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What are you saying? I'm saying that the target of the Witness's murder plot was not the Ringmaster. Because it was never his intentions to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Order, order. Bailiff, I don't care who it is. Smack anyone who's loud in the face. Twice if you must. Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Ow! Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to his court? Why did you do that? Are you attempting to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? Yes, he was. Yes, I am. Regina Berry? This young girl is the Ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro. You were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Objection! You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is, you're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough. Mr. Wright, allow me to- Ow! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence, now. I want to know why Acro would kill R Regina Berry. Y yes, me, me too. I demand to see some proof. Present evidence that proves Acro was out to kill this young girl. There's that note. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's... The piece of paper that we found inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes. But there's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place that note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. 
You mean it wasn't for, for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Barry. Order! 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 Bailiff gets smacking! Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours... It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria's bulletin board. That's when her father, I mean the ringmaster, saw the note. That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in the plaza instead of Regina. And he was be and he was killed because that of that mistake. Instead of Regina. That's 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 incredible. Remember the testimony Agro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bus and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted the kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Acro had no idea who was who it was that arrived at the plaza. Because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it! I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza. That's when he let the bust fly. Hey, Nick. Isn't Regina listening to all of this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. Acro wrote this note to Regina. Objection! Foolishly foolish fool with foolishly foolish ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish I've even it you've even made it me sound like a foolhearted fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you are so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes, what about that line? Well, if the note was not meant for Regina Barry, it would have meant that this note is declaring that Regina Barry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What are you saying? The ringmaster knew what this note meant, which is why he went into, he went to the plaza. In place of his lovely daughter. Uh, ho hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. An incident occur occurred six months ago. And now I'm more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron. Wait, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case has its start in what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um... I think so. Well then, if that is the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in this note? I, I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. I can't answer that question. The judge is going to think I'm bluffing. The conclusive evidence about about the incident six months ago is actually... What was in the box? Hmm... Achoo! 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 What kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you asked for. What? what? Ugh. 
Oh my goodness, Mr. Wright. What do you mean? Ah, does someone have a handkerchief? Bailiff walks up, hands on one. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Bailiff. Feel free to go back and smack heads. Oh. Recall that the vi victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence is what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Uh, very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you can draw. Objection! Foolish fool who never tries his tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question. Who was Regina Berry intending, intended victim? Who is this? That's Acro's younger brother. Objection! What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead? Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Acro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him? Do you spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into a, his cur current comatose state. A uh, uh, l, -l, -l lion Regina, I mean, Miss Regina Berry is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's just not in her. Hmm. So then what happened to Acro's brother? He is not the victim of an attempted murder. He is the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? It was way more than that. The lying, biting a bat was no accident at all. Wh what? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix, right? There is no way that Regina would ever incite her own her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being. But Regina is responsible for making the lion bite Acro's brother's brother, Bat. Scarf. Bat's scarf. Stained with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. That's... Uh, that's just a scarf. Acro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who is the one that gave this scarf to Bat? Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina. There is something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Regina gave this scarf to Bat right before the accident. And she covered it with as much pepper as she could. Hey, what's with the silent treatment? I- oh, oh my god, not again. Shoo! Hey, get out of here! Get! Stop it! 
Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We can't cross-examine you. Get off the stand. I'm... I excuse me, Mr. Wright. I can barely see you behind Miss Faye's robes flailing everywhere. It's the bird's fault. Uh, you've done a good job of fingering a criminal. I should have phrased that differently. But out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um... Miss Barry gave a peppered-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? It still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling? Right before Bat was bit by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth changed to, and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling. However... Lion sneeze. What? 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 Leon wasn't trying to bite bad at all. In reality, all he... All he was doing was actually trying to sneeze. Ah. Apparently that's just going to be cut off by a red screen. Oh my gosh, your volume got like crazy and shrieked there for a second. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. It's good now. He sneezed because of all the pepper pepper on the scarf. What? 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 You fool! <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Objection! Wh what's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I... I... I object. For objection's sake. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, this theory, do you believe it? Let's just have Franzi smack the desk a couple more times. There we go. There it is. <laughs> You really intend to say that this is how the... You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Acro nearly lost his brother due to, an, due to this accident. Or this joke, as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot. <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treated this accident with respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I just said was true? A Acro? You don't mean. You can't mean. Witness! Uh, are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pe the scarf, the lion. I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there was an even bigger problem with your theory. Your theory. Uh, what would that problem be? The same problem has always been. Evidence. If I dropped Max's bust on top of the ringmaster... Where's the evidence that proves that claim? Uh, uh, you're on your own with the bird this time, Nick. I'm sorry. 
Hmm. Uh, you mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon. Or the lack thereof, uh, to be more precise. The murder weapon. The bus that the defense claims was used, if that were to be found in Akro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, then that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. The bust. Nick, you've got to do something. This is the last step. If I get this right, the case is won. Let's just see how things turn out. It might be worthwhile to search Akro's room, but... Well, why aren't you going to search his room? It looks like you finally figured it out, didn't you? Now that you know the true meaning of Von Kama Total Justice. I guess... I figured with you, that's the least I should expect. You'd leave no turn stone unturned. A Von Karma never leaves anything to chance. We already searched Akro's room yesterday. W what did you find? There's no need to even or no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in his room, Akro would not be here as a witness. To put a point on it, Max's bus was not found in the room. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright? The bus wasn't in the room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe exercised, er, executed the search by complete surprise. And we took Acro directly to the prosecutor, prosecutor's office after the End of story. J just wait a second. Something's funny about this. <laughs> it looks like you lack the final nail to put in my coffin. Are you guys hearing this shit? But, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here... ...is that which pertains to the death of the Ringmaster. You should know that by now. Uh. Do something, Nick! Don't let this case slip away! The bust! Where is it now? Where's the bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where that bust is. I'm sure you do. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counterarguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. And I... I think that brings things to an end. Uh, 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 I'm still reading from the sneezes. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare to present its less... I mean, case... Lace case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my tongue. Ow. Huh? Okay, Maya. What? We don't need time to do what? Ow! Why are you surprised by this person here? She's your aid, isn't she? D do you really have a, a case to present, Mr. Wright? What? 
Are you asking me? Uh, the rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. I, uh... Hey, wait. You can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Acro's lived his life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Nick, I know you don't want to hear this. <sighs> Nick, just oh, come here for no. a sec. No, Nick. What? You, you managed to prove Mr. Edgeworth not guilty. You can do Maya. this. Nick, you can Maya. do this. Nick, you can do this. Mm. Please. Max is innocent and we know it. Damn it. You can do it. Come on, Nick. Very well. The defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope logic. There's no room for a false step. Sink or swim. The only way through is forward. The murder weapon. Max is bust now. Come on, Nick. Where is it? Uh, damn it! They searched the lodging Somewhere house. Somewhere in the courtroom. It, it's obvious. The bust is inside this very courtroom. It... it's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location for the bus, the bus one for once and all. It's the, uh, it's the witness stand. Acro. I'm sorry to ask this, but do you mind if we take the blanket off of your wheelchair? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and that's a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just want to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be a really easy to say, hide a bust under there. Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bust is under there. We all know you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenience when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been, been all over. Which is why you had to hide it. In the only place you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. You! You fool! How could you... Got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them. Miss Fancy Skavon Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? 
There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch a surprise search in my room last night? Huh? There were two pieces of decisive evidence. The cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. <gasps> my cloak! Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust. Obviously, I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place I could hide it quick quickly was under my wheelchair. Ms. Von Karma, you had things figured all you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now, to be caught in the middle of, of court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I could escape that. So you've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm, it all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Huh. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me? Make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search in your room? If only I hadn't done that. It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the Berry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Berry? Yes, Your Honor. I am responsible for that crime. Acro? All my brother wanted was for G Regina to like him. That's why he teased her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She wanted- she just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times, too. But I just can't forgive her, no matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina g believed in that so purely. She would laugh, laugh innocently while saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it. No matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. So are you saying that you are a victim in all of this as well? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first, I thought I'd kill myself. Then I pondered giving myself up. But I just, I couldn't just stop and leave. I couldn't, not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... I just couldn't end up... I couldn't up and leave yet.
This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again? I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. And thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. This court is adjourned. F -f fabulous But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Acro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question, and one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only at max a million of them. The, thank you. Uh, uh, what's with the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? Why are you looking directly at Nick when you say that? Don't look at me. <laughs> She's been like this for a while now. Sweetie? A sweetie pie? They're never coming back! Now, now everyone's going to split up! Regina? Mr. Wright, tell me something! What, what do you want to know, Regina? You said something right at the end. I couldn't just up and leave yet. Does that mean that that girl is gonna try and get his revenge on me? He's not gonna do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? Are you really sure? I can believe that? Yep, Acro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. If that's true, I want you to, sh to show some evidence. Huh? <laughs> I want to know you're not making that stuff up about Acro not wanting revenge. Your cat is very concerned and trying to <laughs> comfort me. She thinks you're upset. <laughs> Sweet girl. Acro didn't want you to get caught for a reason. Didn't want to get caught for a reason. Wow. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. But that... That's right, Regina. He's still alive, you know? I never do. But now that Acro's been caught... Uh-huh. I know. What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to bed as long as it takes. Until he opens his eyes. And then until he can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well, hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max. Uh, what is it, Mo? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. So whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up the contract. 
I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. Hmm. What's going to happen to the circus now? Uh, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Hmm. Even though he's not here anymore, everyone's sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as the new ringmaster. I'll turn this circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. The best circus this world has ever seen? D don't laugh! That's quite the goal. Oh, yay, I can't wait! Oh, then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max. Let's work together and make our circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I, I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um, Regina, you're going to help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think that I brought you to court today? Uh... We've got to work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been. Most right, Sweetie Pie. It can't be the Berry Big Circus without Regina Berry. Max? Nick? Seems like everything is going to turn out alright here. I can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. We'll save you the most fabulous seeds. It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm gonna order special whoopee cushion seats. Oh god. And legend has it has it he's still <laughs> laughing to this very day. day. I see. What made the case? A yesterday's surprise raid. It really paid off just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? It was just a theory. If Acro really was the killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. You mean Mr. Wright? Of course. Well, detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Acro's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the chief prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Guess who's back? Back <laughs> again. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Turn on big top. Jesus fucking Christ. We're done with it. <laughs> Woo! Yay! Okay, so a couple of things. Um, it's just unanimously been... I don't know if, like, the fandom came to this decision unanimously or not, but, like, for some reason, whenever Miles shows up after, like, a hiatus, people always play the song Without Me by Eminem. <laughs> and it is hysterical every time. <laughs> that is now his theme song. It pretty much is his theme song within the <laughs> fandom. It's hysterical. Um, never, you never took him one for rap music. Yeah. <laughs> no, me neither. And he is the cover of the final case for all my turnabout. But we're gonna talk a little bit about turnabout big top here before we continue. Yes. So Did you actually jot everything down that you wanted to. Oh no, that was for the game overall. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, that was for the game overall. Um, there's actually a reason why I took Max and. Katie took Acro because I would have taken Acro 
for the final part just to save her some voice acting strain. But the thing is, Katie doesn't like Max. You you admit to that. You're not terribly yeah. comfortable with him. No, I I am not very fond of him. You, he's grown on you. But... He's grown on me, but I still just uh you're you're still just not a big fan yeah and um and (laughs) this might be a hot take that gets me uh gets me in some hot water but i'm going to say it i don't like acro um let's take a moment and think back to um when we were talking about Gant, if you were if you listened to the end of the Rise from the Ashes thing, we were talking about how Gant was the only big bad who gave up very gracefully. Uh, chat at the time mentioned uh, or alluded to Acro without spoiling anything in the chat. They said that a villain in the next game was very graceful in how they gave up, and they were referring to Acro. Um, and that he does give up, and he says, yeah, you did it, you caught me, I... I, I did it. I did this terrible, horrible, awful thing. And I give Acro props for that. And I think it's very clever that the murder weapon was in the courtroom the whole time that, you know, he thought quickly on his feet and he hid it under his wheelchair. And I want to give props to Ace Attorney as a series because this continues to ring true throughout the games. Um, it doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> doesn't matter if you are it doesn't matter what race you are it doesn't matter what gender you are it doesn't matter how able you are it doesn't matter if you are disabled mentally or mentally mentally or physically uh you can be a killer you can be a murderer they don't care the 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 sort of the theme of ace attorney is just like you know, like, well, not like the theme, but like a theme of Ace Attorney is like the killers can sometimes be the most unlikely people. And that is the case of Acro. That is definitely the case in Acro. He seems like a very well put together, very mild mannered, uh, very polite young man. He talks about how much he owes the ringmaster, how the ringmaster was essentially his like foster father in a way, um, how he saved them from the streets. And the more I've thought about it over the years, because at first I was like, oh, that's so sad. I feel so bad for Acro. And like the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. Because he, and I mean, this is just, I mean, this is what he said. So I mean, people can have their head cannons, but I'm going off by what we were told canonically by Acro. Mm. You, you, Acro, you, you say that you respected the ringmaster, that you loved him. So you think that killing his daughter, what was so precious to him, he lost his wife. We know about that from Mo. We lost his wife or he, he lost his wife or his wife isn't in the picture anymore. Either way, Regina doesn't have a mom. Russell raised her, raised her by himself like up in the circus to the point where she thought that everything was a fantasy. Yes, that is incredibly unfortunate. No, Regina didn't mean to make Leon bite down on Bat. So you, instead of going and talking to Russell about this and saying, hey, look, she's saying this to me and it is, it is really bothering me. I can't get past this. You need to do something, sir, please. She needs to see what has actually happened. Can't we take her to the hospital to see Bat? You know, like, if you don't want to do it, I'm sure Mo would be able to help. Like, they, they are a family for all intents and purposes. Max was the outlier. Max really was the outlier. Like, even Ben and creepy-ass Trillo. Um, creepy-ass Ben and Trillo, I should say. Um... I mean, they were all a family. So the fact that he never once went to Russell and just talked about how much it disturbed him, and he instead went straight to murder, and you can't argue that it's a crime of passion because he thought about exactly how to do it. This was premeditated. He thought about killing a 16-year-old girl rather than trying to ask somebody for help and helping her see reality. That is so twisted and fucked up to me. Like, you you respected and loved the Ringmaster, so you thought murdering his daughter was something that was okay to do? 
How do you think Russell would have reacted? Acro? The circus probably would have shut down. I would I would guess. Russell probably couldn't do it anymore. His own daughter died. Yeah. She's 16 years old. And he knows that she doesn't do it to be cruel. He admitted that. He says, I know she I know she doesn't do it, but I can't forgive that. That's okay. Him not being able to forgive Regina is okay. What happened was terrible and it was tragic and it was an accident. I'm not saying Acro should forgive Regina. Acro can absolutely uh, just hate her. That is fine. I don't I'm not mad that Acro hates Regina. He has a right to. It took his brother away from him. Bat is in a coma and he will likely stay in a vegetative state until he is pulled off life support. Bat is never waking up. As much as they would like you to believe it, Bat is never waking up. And and it's just and so yeah, Acro can hate her all he wants. That's not my problem. My problem is is that he had time to sit there and think about it and he thought, yeah, murder's the best option. He thought, yes, I'll slip a note into her pocket that says to the real murderer, knowing that she lives in a fairy tale world because she's been raised in the circus and not thinking that she wouldn't think it was for her. She didn't think she did anything wrong and you know she thinks she didn't do anything wrong. Why the fuck did you put that in her pocket? What did you think was going to happen, Acro? Again, this can't. To me, this can't be lined up as a crime of passion because he he premeditated every fucking step. Now, true my my true crime mod here can correct me on this if I'm wrong. You can 100% call me out right the fuck now. But to me, Acro's actions speak of complete premeditation. Oh no, it absolutely is premeditated. So he had the, time. It can to, be. It can still be a crime of passion and be premeditated. Those two are not mutually exclusive. Okay, uh, tell me more. Uh, as long as there is some thought and it's not done within a split second, even if it is, it is a crime of passion, aka like with how he is, like how he wanted it for his brother and everything. Um, as long as there's even a split second thought where you can consider doing something else, it is. It is considered. It is no longer considered uh, an instantaneous, but a premeditation. Okay, so do you think Acro? So, so do you, so. Um, I know you said it a minute ago, but I just want to like just make it clear for people listening. Do because you you don't hold the same kind of anger that I do about Acro. No, I don't. You you agree that what he did was terrible and stupid. Oh yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. But was it premeditated? Yes or no. Yes, it was absolutely premeditated. Okay, because there was there was thought put into it. It was not a, it was not a instantaneous thing where you know it just happened. No, and but would you say it's a crime of passion and in that manner, like in that you know it's an instant, like he couldn't, there was no other option for him. No, he it wasn't for, for me. It wasn't a crime of passion. You 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 agree with me in that he had other options that he could have talked to Russell. Oh yeah, he absolutely could have. Like, that, that's really the main thing that gets me. And I'm speaking as someone, and everybody suffers grief differently. So I'm not going to say, like, I suffer from a place of grief, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has lost somebody in their life. So, and everybody experiences grief differently. Um, But from my experience of grief, I know that, obviously, you don't think straight sometimes, even when you think that you're thinking straight. And Acro might have been in that mindset, yes. But... The fact that he respects Russell so much that he wouldn't even consider talking to Russell about this. Th there's just something wrong about it. If like if they really wanted us to if they really wanted us to feel bad for Acro, there should have been something about I even tried to talk to him about mm -hmm. it and him just and Russell just kind of being in denial because we do see Russell as a good as a very good man. But he is a man with faults. He let Regina grow up in this fairy tale world. Like he as a parent is responsible for how Regina grew up. A good man was killed, but he is not completely blameless either. He he let Regina grow up thinking these things, and instead of telling her the truth about Leon, he said that Leon went and became a star. 
And that's really what, and th- that was kind of like for Acro, it seems like that was kind of the hair trigger was that she kept laughing and saying that Bat was a star, so it was okay. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, Acro was going to the hospital and seeing his brother hooked up to machines and they're all that's keeping him alive. Because if Acro gives the go-ahead, they pull the plug and he's done. Mm-hmm. And so to hear that from him, yeah, I mean, like, I have thankfully n- not been in that position. Um I think it's a terrible thing and I'm not going to talk about, you know, the morality of that situation because that's not relevant. You can think what you want about that kind of situation uh, of vegetative state. But, um, but yes, all of that could have been completely fucking with Acro. And should he forgive Regina? No, he doesn't have to. Absolutely not. It's just that he had chances. He had six months to do something. And no, six months isn't a long time when you're grieving a loved one. But for God's sake, this man was your father, and you've said it so many times. You could have done something, Acro. And it makes me so angry. I I feel like if they really wanted us to feel really terrible for Acro, they they could have had just a short scene where he's like, you know, like Mr. Barry, please. And Russell is like, no, she can't, she can't handle reality. She can't handle this, you know, or he even says it. He's like, you know, I tried to talk to Russell, but he wouldn't listen to me. You know, just when he's being honest about everything Mm -hmm. at the very end, because he's being very sincere. He's being completely honest. Yeah, he is. I do not doubt his sincerity. One fucking second at the very end. He admits it. He says, all I am is a murderer. And he's right. He became a murderer. He planned to murder a 16-year-old girl who didn't know any better because the people around her let it happen. And he was complicit in that, too. He wasn't trying to give her a a wake-up call until something happened to his brother. Mm Mm-hmm. So, in a way, they're all victims and they're all criminals, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, every member of the circus, in, in a manner of speaking. Um, it's it's a very emotionally complex case, and that's why I'm like, I'm going to be in hot water for this take that I don't like Acro, because I'm the only person I've seen, because most people very much feel bad for him, and they think he's a very empathetic villain. And I'm just like, D- fucking no. Like, I can't say I wouldn't do the same. Nobody can make that claim. I, you know, I would be as, I would be a dumbass if I, you know, stood on a soapbox and said, I would never do that. We, we don't know what's going to happen until it truly happens. And everybody processes grief differently. But to me, uh, on the outside, Acro had six months to do anything. Mm-hmm. To talk to Russell, to do anything. And he just didn't do it. If it had been done quicker to the event... It could have been seen as a crime of passion and you could have related to him more. Maybe there wasn't a need for an explanation. Maybe it was just something that had happened recently. Even something closer to the date would have made us feel more, at least me, feel more sympathy for Acro. Like, I I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't like him. He, just thinking about it, he, he makes me spit fire. Like, just, do you think murdering a 16-year-old is going to fix anything? Like, it's just, dude. It's all fucked. It's all fucked up. There there are no winners in this. It's all terrible. Yeah. And I mean, I do appreciate Phoenix Wright for that. You know, like, not everything is a happy ending. Not every killer is in some people. Some people might be like, well, that's the point. You know, like, it's not, you know, every killer isn't a bad person. Yes, I know that. I played Turnabout uh, Samurai. D. Vasquez did it out of self-defense. <laughs> Jack Hammer was a dickhole. Um, like, yeah, there, there are plenty of cases throughout the series that definitely muddy the waters. But just, and like, I felt bad for Acro at first. It was only after I played the game a few times and I really thought about it that I actually started getting very angry. Um, about everything. But um, I do want to give props to the series because no matter the, the case does not care who the fuck you are. If you if you are alive, you can commit murder in Ace Attorney. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do it accidentally. You can do it on purpose. You can do it 
Uh, you can do it if you're an animal. You can do it if you're a human being. It, Ace Attorney does not care. If you have the capacity to live, breathe, and think, you can kill somebody. Yep. They do not give a shit. And I think that that's a great thing, actually. Because it just portrays everybody as humans. Human, yeah. And it's not like, oh, well, you know... Like, Dee Vasquez couldn't have done it. She's a, you know, she's a tiny woman. Like, they bring those up as points of defense of, like, she couldn't have picked up that giant samurai spear because that's just a fact. Her stature, or, like, her her sta- her, uh, her stature wouldn't, like, she was very slim and she likely would not have had the strength to pick up a big samurai spear to stab him in the chest with. So what happened? She pushed him. She could push him. He could lose his balance in that costume easily. It's the same fucking thing that happened years ago when she lost her uh, her boyfriend. The exact same thing happened to Jack Hammer. So, I mean, that that isn't brought up as, like, a sexist comment. That's just brought up as, like, a point of contention as to if she's the real murderer or not. That's the only time they ever bring that kind of stuff up. Yeah. Because, I mean, look at Mia. She was a badass attorney. And, I mean, yes, she died. But, trust me, she only continues to get more badass. Oh, yeah. Game three is where you actually really start to see more of Mia's, uh, like, how... how like, how kick-ass she actually was. Yeah. Like, you, you really start to see how amazing Mia truly is. Like, Mia just gets better and better through the trilogy. She's fantastic. And, um, I mean, and then you have Francisca, who is an amazing prosecutor. Because here's the cool thing about Francisca is that she actually does throw around some legal terms and legal jargon, and that, you know, kind of gets you to hate her at first, because she does things that make it seem like she's manipulating the case, but these are tactics that prosecutors actually use. Mm -hmm. This isn't her, like, fucking around with the law like her father. This is, this is, like, her using the, using the law to her advantage, and we're very much going to see that in this next case. Oh, yeah. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, but she but but like for uh for the case with Maya, she said you can plead justified self-defense. Mm-hmm. She gave Nick that out. She gave him the option to plead justified self-defense for Maya and she would have prosecuted it as that. She didn't care about she she didn't want Maya to die. She wanted to beat Phoenix Wright to get Miles to come out of hiding. And I mean, in a way, she is doing what she's accomplishing. Miles is seeing her trials and he's coming out of hiding. He's seeing what she's doing and he's coming out of hiding. Mm-hmm. Or so the last scene is implying. I mean, you, he's going to show the fuck up. He's on the, he's on the fucking thing of, uh, he's like, he's the, he's the main splash. Like he's on yeah. the main splash page. He's, he's like who that is focused on. And he's a big player in this last case. Hang on, sip of tea. So yeah, honestly, I took Max because I don't mind Max. Um, I he's actually kind of endearing to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, after you explained, like you told me why, and I was like, all right. And then like I read the the arc with the character you were talking about, and I was like, oh god. I was like, God, if you have that view of him, no wonder you don't like him. All right, all right, you get a pass yeah. on that. And like after I explained my frustration with Acro to you, you were like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, and we want this, like, as much as we bitched about Turn About Big Top, we do want this to be as fair as possible. Like, we don't want to go in and, you know, just kind of half-ass a role, even if we don't like the character. And we, when we were talking about the roles, I was kind of hedging on, I was like, I can do acro. And, you know, I think, d- did you suggest that you take it or did I ask you to take it? Uh, no, I said I would take it um, just because I know you just dislike him that much and it just wouldn't be fair to the character yeah and we and we want to do the characters justice because we want we want anyone watching for the first time or even people who like these characters who know and like these characters to be able to enjoy it in the capacity that it is given um obviously with our own spin on things but um we still want people to be able to enjoy things without this bias of the let's player being like just the whole time, just being like, uh, nanny, 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 you know? Like, God, I hate Monford Von Karma so fucking much, but I tried not to let that show when I voiced him. Like, I, he strikes a very personal chord with me, and we'll get into that way later. Um, 
But um, another thing I actually thought of um, during the end of this case, there's a couple of parallels between um, Regina and Francisca. Yes, there are. I like I notice them every time and then I just forget about them because I repress this case because it's hell on earth. Um, but I mean, she, she has to like correct herself and say Regina's name properly instead of just saying like, she said, Regina, I mean, Miss Regina Barry. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, after she hears about what Acro's plan is, she can't stop herself from saying how horrid. Yeah. And everything. And there, I mean, there is something about a young woman who lived in a very sheltered world and didn't know what reality was. Francisca is very similar to Regina in that aspect. She was raised by Monfred von Karma. Look at how fancy they dress. Look at how fancy Miles dresses. When we see flashbacks of him as a kid, he had on uh, a sweater and like a little bow tie. He didn't have anything frilly or roughly. Now he dresses to the nines. He's got a cravat. He's got a very expensive looking suit and a waistcoat. Uh, the von Karma's are a family that are very fancy. Um, Monfred was completely uh, ostentatious in how he dressed. Like, his waistcoat was full of trim and bling. His coat was full of trim and bling. His cravat was ten times rougher than Miles's. He had the he had the pin on it, I think. Yeah. Um, Francisca has a bow. Um, she's more elegant than her father was. She's more subtle and elegant. But she still dresses very fancily. Um, and, you know, so she, it, it's obvious that they come from wealth and Miles, I mean, we'll, we'll see more when we see more of Gregory because we will see more of Gregory. I promise. Um, Miles came from like a, like a middle-class family. People tend to forget that because he's kind of rolling in money now, but, uh, he came from a middle-class family. So, I mean, there, there's something to be said about a woman like Francisca being raised in, uh, a very sheltered world, just like Regina was. It's just a different type of shelter. Yes. Regina lived in a fairy tale. Francisca lived in uh, something very complicated that you will see more of in this next case. That's all I can really say. Uh, Katie and I have been talking a lot about uh, Franzi and Miles and their upbringing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um because Miles is my favorite prosecutor period and Franzi is one of hers. So yeah. we both have a lot of capital T thoughts about them and their dynamic and everything like that. Um, and uh, I will say the anime handled this so much better. <laughs> oh yeah. It cut so much of the fat. They completely left Ben and Trillo and their crazy creepy ass crush on Regina out. Like, oh, yeah. it was, it was like money stole the ring, but you didn't know what the ring was for. It was more of like a nod to like, if you've played the game, you know what the ring is for. Yeah. Nick didn't go into it. Also in the, but it, also in the anime, Nick doesn't have the Magatama. That doesn't happen. Yeah. No, he does not have the Magatama. Um, I mean, which makes sense if you're trying to go with the flow of like it happening live. Cause the cross examinations kind of happen live. Almost like as it's being said, it's not the person just isn't sitting there repeating it ad nauseum. That's for gameplay's sake. Um, yeah. The the cross examinations actually happen as they're giving testimony. So um, I mean that it works to keep the so like the courtroom pace is actually very quick. So in order to kind of keep that pace quick in the investigations, he also doesn't have the magatama and he's kind of running off of his wits um, instead. Mm -hmm. But it's still very inherently Nick. But yeah, they, they entirely trimmed the fat. Katie and I were bracing ourselves so hard when Mo got on the stand. And he was on the stand for, what, five minutes? Yeah. Five to ten minutes. And then he was off and we were like, that's it? Oh my god, that's it? Like, the whole case was, what, like two episodes? Three episodes? Yeah, about three episodes. It's in season two. Let me look it up really quick. Ace Attorney Anime Season 2 Episodes. Give me a list. Give me a list. Give me a list. Uh, well, eight episodes. It, it's like it started at the end. 
Um, or no, it was, yeah, no, it was season. No, 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 no. It was season one. Sorry. Season one was the first two games. Oops. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Okay, let's see. Farewell, my turnabout was not as many episodes as it should have been, honestly. Um, one, two, three. Three episodes. Yeah. Yep. Well, when a circus is headlining magician, Max Galactio becomes accused of murdering the ringmaster. Russell Berry, Phoenix begins investigating the circus and learns of the uneasy relationship Max has with... Uh, episode two, the trial takes a recess after Mo claims he saw Max near the crime scene around the time of the murder. Phoenix meets Acro, an acrobat who recently lost the use of his legs and learns of another blah, blah, blah. It, it trails off. Phoenix describes to the court how Barry was murdered and determines who really killed him, but he must locate the murder weapon to prove his theory. So, like, the last episode was essentially just this final stretch. It was essentially yeah. just Acro on the stand. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was done really well. They handled it really well. Uh, uh, Max was actually a bit more likable. He wanted better, like he, he wanted better for the circus, uh, as well, but he did a better job of showing it. There was this, there was yeah. actually this drama of like him wanting more money and everybody knew about him wanting more money and they were pissed because they weren't getting pay raises. And it turns out that Max wasn't just asking for more money for him. He was asking for more money for everyone. Mm -hmm. He thought that everyone worked really hard and he thought if they were being paid better, they would strive to do better and be the best performers that they could because he saw that potential in them. Just like mm -hmm. he does in the game. It's um, just, it's it's portrayed better. It is portrayed better in the in the anime. Max is more he, he's he's more likable in the anime. Definitely, I think I think yeah. you I think you like anime Max more than you do game Max. Yes, I do. Yeah, he's definitely more like because they also show kind of what a dope he is. Like, see again, Max, you know, throwing his cards like he does in the in the um in the detention center, and they just bounce off the glass. Like you laugh because it's like, what the fuck else did you think was gonna happen? But it's like that's not something you think about when you're playing the game. Mm -hmm. so uh the anime did a really good job with like max's characterization they cut out ben and trillo's creepy ass thing i don't know if they even have lines they're there but i they... think they just had like silent little like sections where it just shows nick and maya talking to them yes yeah like montages yeah montages over like music that's based off of the game's music um that talks about, uh, and it shows Nick talking to them, like, an investigation, but not in court. They never take the stand. Um, and then they help Nick prove, because Nick a actually asks everybody, um, to, like, he, he, like, gets a whole thing together. Like, he gets, like, a little diorama together to show how it could have happened. So, um, Ben and Ben with, like, Trillo kind of, like, tucked up against him, and, like, Mo are, like, helping, like, with the pulley and everything to show how the trick could have gone off and all that kind of, or like how the murder could have gone off and everything like that. Yeah. Like Nick decides that the only way to really understand is to go to someone who knows it. So it's implied very much. So I think he even says that he went to Max and asked him about the trick and how it could be pulled off. So he could solve how the murder happened. Yeah. Um, and he recreated that kind of, and then he, you know, was like, okay, how could Acro do it? Okay. This is how Acro could have done it. Blah, 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 blah. And he put it together like that. Um, and the ending was also different because Acro actually got some closure. Because before he was taken away, Regina actually runs down out of the gallery and yells to Acro that she's going to look after Bat. Until he opens his eyes. And Acro actually, he doesn't like fully forgive her, but there is something in him that kind of softens a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. he feels better knowing that Bat is going to be looked after. He can't forgive Regina, but he can be thankful that she will do this. Yeah. And he's, he's seeing that she is finally starting to see more of reality. So, like, there's a bit more closure for Acro, too. And I liked that quite a bit. So, I mean, the anime did a great job with this. Because Katie and I were bracing ourselves. Oh my god, yeah, we were. And then we were just like, oh my god, it's over. Yeah, we were like, that was incredibly painless. It, it was so painless. Like, I really, if you don't think it's that bad, I challenge you 
to play to get to this point and just play through it with no guide. Yeah, play through it with zero guide. And don't come back to here either. Don't come back here and see what we did. Cause trust me, you're like, oh well I'll remember it. No, you won't. No. Oh I, no. I've played this game so many fucking times and I'm like, what do you press? What do you do? Fuck. Didn't you tell me earlier today Prozidi and Mankey caved in when they did this and looked up a guide on their phones? Yes, they did. Because they, they didn't know what the fuck to do? Yeah. Yeah. And they both love these games dearly, too, so. Exactly. They're Oh, my God, they're huge fans. Part of what Pro Z, what made ProZD big was voicing uh, Ace Attorney comics. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't do that anymore because now he is an, a, an actual voice actor, so he doesn't want to, you know, get in trouble with Capcom or anything like that. But, yeah. um... Yeah, he, he used to fan dub uh, Ace Attorney fan comics all the time, just for fun. So, yeah, no, ProZD loves this series. You know more about Mankey than I do. Um, but uh, you said Mankey really loves the series, too. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, so even these guys who have also played the games multiple times were like, what the fuck was it again? I don't remember. Oh, my God. Somebody, uh, help. <laughs> so, I mean... For me, we're over, like, one of the biggest hurdles in the series. We really are. Because on replays, this case is what stops me. Um, And next up is definitely one of the more uh, talked about and more famous cases of the series. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a case that a lot of people talk about. And it is Endgame, so it's, it's a doozy of a case. So, um, we're going to end this episode here and start the next one afresh. I think we'll probably take a tiny break. Yeah, let's take, let's take a break. A little break. But, um, yeah. yeah. So, thank you guys so much for watching and for listening to me talk about, turn about Big Top for, like, another fucking half hour. But it was all shit that needed <laughs> to be addressed. I think. It was all shit that needed to be addressed. Um, I'm yeah, sorry. I mean. I, oh, go ahead. I mean, this case is just. It's it's just it's just a case. <laughs> Jesus H, is it ever? Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. We are heading into farewell my turnabout uh, next time. So we are on the final case of game two, believe it or not. Um, but this one will take a while. Oh yeah. This is a case with very complicated twists and turns. So thank you guys so much for watching. Those of you on YouTube. We will see you next time. This has been Danny. And Katie. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good one. Take it easy.